Well, we were talking about how, you know, having good teeth can make you a happier person, but, you know, actually everything that you put into your body and the in investment-wise and the work you do to uh, create balance in your body is going to make you happier. And writing about that is Dr. Uh, Sanjay uh, Jain, who has a book called Optimal Living 360, Smart Decisions Making for a Balanced Life. Um, look, balance. I mean, everybody's trying to get some, establish some sort of balance in their life. But you found a way to communicate this um, based on, 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 what, your MBA background? Yeah. I have an MBA, and people think, oh, you have an MD. What are you doing with all these degrees? So I'm, not, I'm done with my degrees. I'm not going to get a law degree, so yeah. I'm done with those two. Okay. It wouldn't help you anyway. I mean, you're, you're <laughs> stop, at the, stop at the medical degree. I mean, that would, that would be enough. But, but what came first, the medical or, or the business? I got my medical degree first. Okay. And I got my business degree a few years later. And then based on your experience as a doctor mm -hmm. and your... Um, and your ability as uh, you know a, a businessman, you're able to fine tune these some of these concepts of how everything is connected in your body, right? And a lot of that is is, is did you grow up? You grew up in the states. I grew up in Cleveland, and right. so that's a very cold area. So you know, growing up as a little kid, my parents are first generation, so they actually mm -hmm. didn't they came from, you know, from India. From India, uh -huh. so they didn't have all the tools that you know education. And when it kind of passed on, it was great, but it wasn't what growing up it was like and so I sort of learned along the way a lot of these tips in health and relationships and so many different things but a lot of they sort of came ahead recently in the last five years in medical school they don't really teach you wellness they teach you pathology like you know heart disease and lung disease but they don't teach you the basics how to lose weight and nutrition so I actually had to go through a process before and kind of learn some of that myself and so that's kind of what I put in the book and some of this it seems to me like uh, people with um, you know Indian uh, backgrounds, mm -hmm. you know, whether it be in Ayurvedic uh, medicine, everybody mm -hmm. seems to be into this whole um, integration of yeah. everything and how everything works with each other. Every whether it's nutrition, how does nutrition make you good? Nutrition make you ultimately a happy person, for instance. Well, they say you are what you eat, and that's pretty true because you know what you put into your body is, is pretty much what's going to show outwardly. So, you know, not too long ago, I used to eat, there'd be very uneducated as a doctor, believe it or not in terms of food, and junk food would be some of my go-to meals, and uh -huh. so I started gaining weight, and so from that, my sugar started climbing up, and then my cholesterol started going up, and I had to stop it at some point, and, you know, going through a process of exercise and dieting and really changing my dietary habits, I've had to learn a lot, so that's what I want to really send the message out to people, that our diet really has to change, there's a lot of sugar out there, we consume a lot of sugar, there's that's one of the biggest killers out there is that the amount of sugar out there, the processed foods that we eat, the processed breads. So we got to really kind of look at that and say, hey, we got to change those things. Uh, where do you start with all this? I mean, I think most of us know, hey, a, a good diet's better for you, uh, exercise is good for you. Um, but how do you start? You know, let's say, you know, you're, you're not healthy, you're, you, know, you have some illnesses, you're overweight, you're not working out. Um, I mean, you just can't do everything at once, right? And you can't even bite off more than you can chew. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely correct. And so you have to kind of look at yourself in the mirror and say, where do, you know, what things do I need to improve on? And by looking at yourself in the mirror and say, hey, there's a lot of things, diet, exercise, and these are big, big categories. So let's break it down. you got to start baby steps. So diet, what does that mean? Well, let's look at the diet. How many times am I eating a day? How much portions am I eating? So we can start with portion control. Eating a lot and very few meals could be changed. Try eating less and eating more frequently in, during the day. So that's a small change you can make. People love chocolate. People love some of the you know, comfort foods. That's not going to change overnight, but make those baby steps. And so you got to kind of do that along with exercising. And that's, all, that's another broad category. Mm -hmm. What does exercise mean? Well, you know, everybody here is 30 minutes a day, but that's really not enough treadmill you know and probably for people who are just starting off getting some professional help is a probably a good idea get a personal trainer kind of help you those on the exercise patterns and kind of get the technique right yeah I read somewhere that with exercise um, if you keep moving all day long it's mm -hmm. better than just you know being a stationary sitting at a desk and then doing an hour an hour and a half of exercise and then being a stationary again I, right? I, I just keep yeah, going yeah, right? I, I totally agree going. because yeah. really you know, the 30 minutes a day is one concentrated point in your day. 
You've heard of the 10,000 steps program. So people want to get you moving. Getting moving is not just a one-time deal. It's something that you do throughout. So taking steps up the stairs, walking, parking your car pretty far, taking that extra step to kind of move your body a lot more is going to go a long way. You, you talk about you know, preparing all this by, by um, doing some smart decision making. What do you do? You write down a plan, and, and how, how does somebody start this? There's a guide in the book on how to do yes. this. So I call it something yeah. called integrative decision making. And what that really does, it takes all the aspects in your life and kind of frames it in a way so you can understand what to do when you make an important decision. So I, one of the examples I put in the book is really not health related, but for example, if you're traveling, how do you frame, how do you make a decision on how to travel? And understanding your aspects in life. So I have something called the core life assets, and there's an acronym that I call ASPIRES. So A is really the assets, S is safety, P is physical, I is intellectual, R relationships, E is economic, and S is spiritual. You get that down, you'll be right there. So when you make a decision, think about those things. How do those things get affected? So you, uh, there's a process that I put together to, hey, let's put this down in paper. Let's kind of go through each one and see how these things are affected. You go through that, you really make the right decision. And this would affect your mental health as well? Yes, it does. And so that's another thing that how these are interconnected. So in order to reduce stress, you know, a lot of things are connected. So when, I, you know, when you're in financial stress, mm -hmm. that affects your mental uh, stress. And so that affects your physical and your relationships. So these are how all these are connected. So that's the whole purpose of this, to understand the connections and how one thing can affect the other. You know, it, it seems that people who are um, successful financially mm -hmm. um, seem to be, to generally speaking, in better health than people who aren't. And the contrary is true as, as, as well, is, is that um, I would think that um, better health also gives you the ability, you know, to become uh, more successful in other aspects of your life. But what, what comes first, you know? Well, that's, a, that's a great point because you go to Whole Foods, get the organic food section. Mm -hmm. The milk is a lot more expensive than the regular milk. Right. So why is that? A lot of these organic foods are more expensive. So personal training, that's not free. It costs money. Uh, medication costs money. And when you mention the health, yeah, there is a cost. And so whether you say money isn't happiness, that's true to an extent, but you need these financial means to acquire these health benefits, as we talked about. So that's the connection. People want, there's a connection between that. So to your point, uh, to be financially well off, there is a little bit of a tendency to have the better insurance and that sort of thing. But that doesn't mean if you, if you don't have that ability, you can't make those changes regardless. Right, but you know, you walk into the market and here's mm -hmm. um, the conventional strawberries for $5 and here, uh, for, uh, for the organic, let's say the organic sure, strawberries sure. are $5 and the conventional are $2. So most people are going to pick up the $2 strawberries. Is it really going to make a big difference? You know, there are certain areas where it makes a big difference and certain areas they're not. So you kind of have to kind of go through that. When it comes to like milk, the organic, there's a lot of things that um, they put bio antibiotics in some of that products, they put hormones in there. So there, in that particular sense, uh, I would see a difference. Some of the foods, there could be organic, but there could be pesticides or there could be other things. So really it's, it's a very fine line in terms of what the real true organics are and what are not. So I put a lot of that information in the book in terms of what to select. What about the, um, what's uh, ultra pasteurized? <laughs> I mean, you go into the market. Sometimes you find milk, and the you know the expiration dates are two, three months away. You know, that, that, it just seems to me, uh, you know, it, inherently that that can't be good for you. If you ever go to a gas station, you get the unleaded, super unleaded, and the premium, and the difference between the two, there's probably not a whole lot in terms of performance. And I would say the same thing with the, these ultra pasteurized and this pasteurized. It's probably a very similar. And these are a lot of it are gimmicks, I would say. But for the most part, if you're drinking your milk, you'd be in good shape. It's better than drinking soda. And how does the, uh, the, the dietary habits in the United States compare with other countries around the world? Well, the the problem uh, in in this country and, and is the processed food, uh, the convenient food. We got a lot of the junk food out there, the quick the quick satisfaction. And a lot of the food, uh, countries outside of the United States, they have more natural foods and more uh, less processed foods. And that's kind of the biggest thing. When you process foods, you kind of destroy all the nutrients. And so with those the nutrients gone, there's not much left, except the sugars and the bad ingredients that we put in our bodies. So that's something we should eliminate. 
And that's why there's been a big movement of trying to get more natural foods out there. And how does um, genetically engineered food um, work in all this? <laughs> Not well, huh? Not well. Uh, there's, they make a claim that these are uh, you know, food on steroids, right. but really there's not much there. Right, is it bad for you? Uh, uh, there's a lot of studies yeah. out there that claim that these are good for you, and it depends on which industry you talk to. So the industry people, you know, the meat industry would say, oh, these are fine, versus the opposition will tell you that it's, it's not okay. So it really depends on what kind of information you get out there. And you cover so much in this book, including mm. now relationships. What does yes. eating and diet and exercise um, have to do with how good your relationship is? Self-esteem, because all that that you get, the benefits from health, will carry over into your relationships. You're going to feel good about yourself. You feel good about yourself. You're going to be able to interact with people more confidently. And that confidence is going to enhance your relationships. You're obese you don't feel good about yourself, you're probably not going to feel comfortable extending yourself out there. So there's all these connections with relationships and you're going to be more confident. So that also extends to, you know, financial, every, that's why I try to make that connection. Take me through your day. All right, I mean, <laughs> this is all about balance and I'm trying mm -hmm. to think of how you fit all this into a day, you know, with the exercise, the diet, the, uh, the educational component, the every, everything. You wake up, what is it? How do you fit everything I, I, in? Well, here's, yeah. the, here's why I want to qualify. When people hear okay. balance, it's not 20, 20, 20, 20. It's not a number where we right. balance. It's a balance where you kind of have to look at what stage you are in life. So if you're a college student, that part of life is going to be intellectual. You're going to have a lot of balance toward or allocation toward your mind and intellect. When you're, if you're a professional athlete, you're going to be uh, dedicated more toward your physique and but over time in your lifetime you want to balance it out so maybe later on you'll be more spiritual so to answer your question in my life I'm a little bit I'm a father I got young two young kids so my priority is giving them time and giving them and, and acting as a, a father uh, mm -hmm. married uh, being a great husband I got a job so those are some of the balanced things I do uh, in terms of uh, relaxation techniques and getting up in the morning trying to be bit disciplined with my uh, exercise routine. So those are part of the things that I try to balance. But is it always going to be balanced? No, absolutely not. But it's a part of trying to balance it over time. And it doesn't have to be in one particular day or a particular week, even over a year. So that's the whole concept of that. Well, name of the book is uh, Optimal Living 360, Smart Decision Making for a Balanced Life by Dr. Sanjay Jane, you have such a famous name. <laughs> a lot of Sanjays out there. Uh, yeah, and they're all, they're all doctors. <laughs> well, you, have to, you have to be named Sanjay to get into medical school, I understand, today. Uh, that might be on an application coming soon. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you so much. Uh, give me one thing that somebody, a viewer, can do when, over, after the show that can improve their life. Stay committed and stick with it. Don't lose faith. Just You can, I, I, you can do it. So there's no, don't lose hope. The answer should have been, read the book. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. that too, that's true. Okay, we'll see you next week. Thank you very much, you Dr. Very much. Sanjay Jain. Be sure to visit us online for more information about today's guests. To see past shows or even contacting us about being on the show, simply go to the edbernsteinshow.com. That's the edbernsteinshow.com.